Okay, welcome back. Continuing our discussion with an American hero, certainly in my opinion, Congressman Ron Paul. Going to change the subject a little bit here, and we're going to we're going to get into the comments uh, that the press is making right now about gold, silver, uh, U.S. dollar being the currency of last resort. That perhaps changing uh, in the very near future. Let's see what uh, what Congressman Paul thinks about that. First of all, comment if you would on the direction of gold and silver right now. We are in a a bull market, both in gold and silver, that is almost unprecedented. As we're recording, silver is over forty dollars an ounce. Gold is approaching fifteen hundred dollars an ounce. In your opinion, Congressman, why is that happening? Well, you know, I think of gold as being relatively stable. Mm-hmm. It, you can store value in gold. It's not rigid, but it's it's stable. So I I use the word the gold price is going up just like everybody else goes. But I always remind myself it isn't that. And you know, it's the dollar going down. Mm-hmm. And what kind of a mess we have in Washington? We're the national debt is going up this year two trillion dollars. There's no way uh, we can borrow that much money. Uh, revenues are going way down because the economy is so weak. What else is left but printing money? So the value yeah. of the money has to go down, and uh, it's astounding. A lot of us who worry about this and predict it for a long, many years, it's pretty amazing that when it finally comes, you get, wow, you know, <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be quite this bad, and how much worse is it going to get? You mm-hmm. almost think that uh, uh, I wished we weren't right, in, you know, about this. But, no, it's telling us that it's very, very serious. And, uh, quite frankly, I think it's just starting because, remember, gold for a period of time sort of tried to disprove some of our theories, like from 1980 up until uh, 1999 for 20 years. The mm-hmm. uh, dollar price of gold didn't, didn't go up. But I don't, I, don't think, I don't think that means there wasn't inflation. The money supply kept increasing. But the psychology of the market was such that they weren't worried enough and they didn't discount it. So right now, I think this is sort of a catch-up. And then there's not only the catch-up, but what we're doing currently with QE2 and mm-hmm. probably QE3 coming, but also what's going, what they expect to happen in the future. Remember, in 1971, there was a lot of catch-up. Gold was artificially held at $35 an ounce. It, it broke down. The Bretton Woods broke down. Gold became legalized, and then there was this huge surge, probably did some overshooting, but it was catch-up, too. So it isn't like, well, the money supply goes up 10% this year. Gold prices will go up 10%. All prices will go up. That's not the way it works. It, it works in, in fits and starts, you know, and uh, I think that's what we're witnessing. But more and more people are getting frightened, and uh, markets very often tend to overshoot. They undershoot and they overshoot, but I don't think they're on the verge of overshooting yet. I think the dollar has a long way down. And then there's also the, the big concern that I have and what uh, drive, drives me and motivates me is the fact that ultimately you can send the currency to zero. Now, that is big trouble. And uh, we could do that to ourselves if we don't wise up. You know, I think that's a very, very interesting point. You know, that's just kind of more gasoline on the fire that, uh, you know, for, for lack of mm-hmm. better terms, of this the financial turmoil that we're in right now. I'm not quite sure. I mean, I know how we got there, but I sure don't understand the rationale behind it. You know, I have a, a, another interesting question along these lines for you. About three or four years ago, um, the Chinese government began, mainland China, the government began encouraging uh, gold and silver as a, as a medium of savings for its citizens. About a year later, uh, lo and behold, surprise, surprise, China became the world's, or assumed the status of the world's largest gold producer. Okay, Shortly after that, China began talking about uh, the need for the currency of last resort changing from the U.S. dollar to something else, okay, perhaps some type of basket or whatever, but that the currency of last resort be based on, be an asset-based currency, for lack of better terms, and there was talk about that being that being gold. I find that to be very, very interesting, given the fact that today, China is the world's largest producer of gold, and they could be, I I don't have the statistics in front of me, but they're also one of the largest importers of gold. What's that all about? Yeah, and you know, they're still not, Tom, we're still, at least theoretically, our numbers that we report that we hold a lot more gold than anybody else, and it's two or three times more than Germany, and China's down. But it's also 
pretty well recognize that we probably have less than we claim, and China probably has a lot more than they list. Because, like you say, they mine, and I think they buy everything from their miners. Everything they mine, they keep. And also, they have been known to, you know, when the IMF and other banks dump, remember a few years ago, the central banks uh, were so wise that they were dumping uh, gold when it was three and four and five hundred dollars an ounce. Mm-hmm. And uh, and countries like India and China and others were actually buying it. But this is the shift from the West to the East. The West is economically dying, and more capitalism coming out of the Far East and even out of uh, out of China. Nobody wants to say they're capitalists, and mm-hmm. they have a lot of problems. But, you know, you can invest over there. You can build a business. You can make profits. You don't have the burdens that you have in the United States for starting a business. And they may well, you know, devise the, the world currency rather than the IMF or reviving the dollar. We're incapable of getting our house in order and, you know, to restore the dollar as the number one currency. So somebody in the Far East, uh, they may they may have maybe the Japanese and the Chinese and the Indonesians or somebody will get together. But uh, I think the world will eventually go. They have throughout uh, history. They always have to resort to something of value, and they sure. give up on the paper. So yes, I think uh, they may very well be on to something, and they're doing some pretty good planning. We're we're foolish enough. We spend all this money, and we we have the military power, so we think we can throw our weight around and protect and get our oil by invading these countries. China, they work, save their money, take their money, and they invest. So they're investing in places like Iran and and different places. So they're they're taking care of themselves, but they're doing it uh, through peaceful means where we're doing it through militarism and at the same time undermining our currency. Okay, there you have it from Congressman Ron Paul, one of the most insightful and truly patriotic politicians of our time.